Good day, my friends, wherever you may be in the world today. Alan Clements here from Hawaii. Today, October 24th, 2021, this is part, excuse me, six. In this uh, new ongoing series, uh, a master class in creative expression, uh, both as a way of living, this embodied artistic boldness as an expression of consciousness, thought, speech, action, interaction, meditative, dynamic, heartfelt action, um, and the vocation of uh, bringing forth something novel, unique, beautiful from your soul, a poem, a book, a fabric, a painting, a song, something musical, a dance, perhaps even the reformation of your apartment, your flat your wardrobe, your clothing, art as way of expressing and living unique to the style of one's own liberation from fear and the evolution of beauty. So welcome to part six. Uh, this just came to me this morning in my meditation. Um, just the, the creative artistry of naturalness and artistic vulnerability. Um, bringing forth visions, receiving visions. I do believe that images and thought patterns and cognitive at times, eruptions, intuitions, atmospheres, collages, mosaics, information are just coming through us all the time. Conditioning and habit and fixation keeps us easily configured within predictable patterns of behavior and thought and interrelationship and self-judgment and evaluation of forms and events and others. And we keep counting the money up to 10 and backwards again and come what may another day in the life of a life well lived or denied. We don't really know until we look, you dose, you meditate, you relax, you get a massage, you think you have a loss, there's fear, there's openness. You walk to Haleakala, you bathe on the beach, you walk into the ocean, you dream, and there comes something forth, a vision, naturalness. I just want to share the serendipity of a day, just quite spontaneously, that has led me to this moment now with you. Thank you for being in my life. Um, I've been thinking a lot, a lot over the years, but even more so this last week as my daughter approaches her 15th birthday, Bella. Bella Clements Earl lives with her mom in Vancouver. She'll be 15 shortly. 15. <laughs> call it DNA, blood, love, time. There's something so special about the child, the boy and girl in our lives. If you are blessed to have had one or you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, Children, we're all children of the same 
who are our parents, but the child. I'm thinking of my daughter Bella on her 15th birthday coming up and what delight it brings me to feel her in her heart, on her terms, giving her that kind of cognitive support from a distance at the moment to be everything that she wants to be on her terms. And even though we're not connected in the way that I would like to be connected, close in proximity, none of us are really living the life ultimately that we want to be living right now in the circumstances that we're faced and dealing with. And so we're not compromising, we're living reinventing naturalness and the artistic vulnerability of not having our needs met in the way that we want them, but yet at the same time meeting them on our own terms and taking it higher, taking it higher, rise up. <laughs> rise up with our creativity and our art and our dharma and our wildness and our outrage, the willingness to feel and express and emote naturally, playing in the, in the tempo, in the rhythms. As you know, I walk the beach, my new Burma, the beach, Baldwin Beach, my new Burma. And there's just something about walking into that meditation hall called eternity on those sand granules that are so connected to Buddhism. <laughs> How often you would hear the Buddha talk in these ancient texts about sand and grains of sand. <laughs> More lifetimes than all sand granules and all beaches riverbanks worldwide. Have you been reborn in this great vast ocean of samsara? Have you not been willing to dive deep into the reality and see the truth of the circumstances, the truth of the circumstances? Wow, how prolific, how biblical, how Buddhist, huh? how existential. The truth of the circumstances. That is the vocation for me of the artist. That is the, the vulnerability edge of going over from predictability and the personal comfort neuroses of, of conditioned behaviors. Because vulnerability isn't just the collapse of certainty, but it's that tearful, wonderful willingness to to engage simultaneously in and out, up and down, and in the middle and beyond, a willingness to feel novelty. That, that it transcends the capacity to know in that time frame how to deal with it, vulnerability. We don't just wait for a collapse of something in order to feel vulnerable. To me, it's, it's a, a consecration, an artistic engagement of naturalness enough to walk into an area of cognitive physical risk, the risk of, of order, the risk of, of obedience, the risk <laughs> of being blamed or shamed or ridiculed by self or other or society or canceled, whatever. And there you stand on that poetic groundlessness, the beach, Baldwin Beach for me, that groundlessness that feels so almost solid in those mushy at times and hardened granules. And yet you feel this impermanence everywhere, impermanence everywhere. You just can't escape that existence is an organic museum of existential reality. And there we either see through the lens of habit or we open our mind and heart to naturalness, right? Naturalness isn't just something being in flow with the extemporaneous movement of thought and emotion and sound and feeling, but it's also being in nature in a naturally authentic, vulnerable, open-hearted way in feeling this breathtaking, wow, experience of goddess and God meeting in this impermanence. And therein lies 
the individual walking down that beach. I do believe that there's an individuality within this m massive eternity without end, my God. And yes, the individuality may not have a centrality, it may not have a permanent essence or a soul or a configuration of, of you know, just certain subjectivity all the time. It may be an emptiness here, an emptiness there, and all around us in all directions, inside and outside. A Nietzsche Vata Sankara, a Nata Vata Sankara, Dukkha Vata Sankara. All conditioned phenomena are empty of self, hold on, congeal, and there will be dukkha, suffering. Wow. So I'm walking down the beach thinking of my daughter. And here comes a woman, and she's in a bikini, and she's pregnant and just moving through time and space like people do on the beach in their own unique rhythm. And I imagined this child, this child in her womb, in her body, this new birth of, of infinity coming forth and there was something so immersive and tender and vulnerable and natural and imaginative to feel into this, this new expression of ancient life. I do believe that rebirthing is a, a concurrence of phenomenology in configurations unexplainable to normal brain functioning neurology. But words like karma and paticca samupada, the shaping of conditions through concentric circles of continuity. And there are teachers and teachings that point to an understanding of this great matrix. And yet within it, we live like a sand granule on eternity. And we call that sand granule certainty. And we habituate ourselves and our eyes and our hands on that sand granule called Earth, consciousness, my life, this time frame, October 24th, 2021, and a pandemic. And the news cycle repeats itself on that sand granule. And there's this birth coming forth from infinity, a mystery made real as a child, a human body, a human life on the beach of Baldwin in my Burma, in this creative naturalness, this artistic mystery coming forth visions of naturalness. How much more natural can life be than life and a child? And I'm going, wow. And I let it pass through me, these thoughts and images, and I reflected for a moment just on my own diagnoses of what's been termed a fatal heart condition, in breath, out breath, any second they say it could last for no more than a split second. There's death, there's birth, there's rebirth, there's embryonic baby, new birth, new Alan, new you, new me, new wind, new time, jump time, October 24th, 3031, a hundred years from now, oh my Lord. And there's that girl on the beach, pregnant, walking on Baldwin and my Burma, Feeling as an artist is intrinsically vulnerable. It's so radically alone and whole simultaneously that you're constantly dealing, for me, with epic loneliness and the fatigue of isolation and the, 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 the quest, the Dharma quest for a, a more expanded communion with more, the community of totality, the community of, of ancestors, the community of nature. I look at the birds around my house here. I look at the, the turtles on the beach. I imagine the fish and the whales and the ocean, the plankton, the seaweed. I see the birds flying. At times I hear dogs. I see cats. You hear the crickets. You hear the you hear the frogs, you imagine all life forms configuring at this very moment on this incredible blip of sand granule called planet Earth. And you go, oh, 
God, how do I imagine the possibility of creating something out of this totality called my own unique expression of art? <laughs> to go to school, to discipline consciousness, to create art forms on the mastery of history, on the innovation of that high risk in you. I like the high risk artist, the performance artist, the comedians who make you cry, both with laughter and personal reflection, and the anguish of saying things that exceed even gallows humor. They're daring to eviscerate the certainty and the conformity to the alphabet of what's acceptable, breaking ranks with that type of unrecognized lockstep to what art should be, right? Break out on the beach of my Baldwin, my Burma. And I came home. I sit in my little humble chair. I turn the lights down. I do a second dose of this which feels right. And I quiet the space to illuminate my heart and my mind. And I listen to a little bit of music and read some poetry. And every now and again glance at the opium of my social media feed and try not to self-judge or evaluate and come back into the fidelity of the flow. I take my notebooks out and my pen, I feel it in my hand and talking about the creative process of how to take thoughts from the heart into the space of something external to self to reflect upon it. I'm in deep now to a film script performance art reading, riff, performance, acting. It's coming, it's coming. I'm getting more and more clear about the strategy, the form, the structure, the budget, the timing, the lighting, the riffing. It's keeping me active. It's my internal Baldwin Beach and my Burma and my artistry configuring in what's feeling to be a radical vulnerability that I've never been so certain of my uncertainty. I don't mean to confuse with or confound with, with contradictory statements, but you know what I mean if you know what I mean, if you know what I mean, if you just know what I mean. Is there an artistry to authenticity? Yes. Is there an artistry to vulnerability? Yes. I walked outside last night midway through my second dose and I'm blessed to be in this magnificent compound by the good graces of this gentleman whose wife has passed on and has graced me out of the goodness of his gratitude and his generosity and his love of love and his support of me and brothers in grieving and living. And I walked outside last night with gratitude. Art is gratitude. It's not a very easy word for me, but I began to reflect upon where I'm feeling grateful, grateful for my daughter, grateful for my choices over the decades of my life, grateful for my associations with Burma, my books, my bringing teachers from Burma to the West, to Australia, to America, the work that I've done over the years, the forms that I've brought forth, even continuing in breath, out breath, any minute you could die, you could die too. You will die, we'll all die, rebirthing into a future, taking death out of the equation, artistically rebirthing, bringing our dharma, our yoga, and asana off the mat so fully that our life is an expression of spiritualized, mindfully intelligentized, 
creatively expressed rebirthing as a process of art as life and within that documenting the evidence of your liberation documenting in every way shape and form if you're going to be an artist a writer a poet a musician documenting the evidence scribble scrabble do whatever you need to do tear pages off of your soul put them on the wall paint colors all over the heart space of your truth with new radiances of liberating insights that take truth from yesterday and just leave it behind as a temporary metamorphosis into a more radiant freedom of understanding insight going into wisdom into radiance into realization going into flow to hyperflow to ascension give yourself the gift of your baldwin beach whatever it may be walk in nature move in nature breathe the oxygen while we still have oxygen to breathe right in breath out breath at any moment we're tempered by mortality aging death catastrophe illness how many people i have met digitally verbally and told through friendships that have been diagnosed fill in the blanks it is inbuilt into the system of the sand molecules on the beaches of eternity nothing can be held i look at those sand granules being washed and moved by the ocean currents and i feel the wind on my body finally i have overcome the belief that the wind in some way is wrong the artistic authenticity of naturalness naturalness inhabiting existence naturally to allow the emergence of vulnerability precious is this vulnerability precious is this vulnerability because it gives birth to insights that you normally don't have nine to five in it even if you don't work with lots of loot nine to five in it with predictable patterns of yoga and sitting in breath out breath in breath out breath i've watched people for monks and nuns for months and years watch that breath insight 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 watching their breath until they die of fatigue calls enlightenment there's nothing in a practice other than vulnerability to see things so new walking on the beach of your baldwin called your burma what will you do with the preciousness of a breath vulnerability as an art form naturalness i came back and i walked outside it was dark and the clouds parted those of you who live on the islands or places where you can see heaven you know what i mean and you look out and you situate your eyes and slowly the light from inside the four walls lessens and pixelation and dimensionality are revealed it is mind blowing to uh, let ourselves walk on the beach of the galaxies right not just the beach at baldwin my burma in feeling the sand granules beneath my feet but feeling the earth beneath my feet as a granule of sand among how many planets billions and billions of earth like spheres they tell us just in our halo think of all the life forms right now simultaneously like that girl on the beach in her bikini giving birth at any minute to this child think of all the pregnancies in the universe right simultaneously within the larger womb of the great divine feminine of infinity the woman of all dimensions and all directions in you and i are being birthed right now within this great thing called love perspective right it's now 20 no it's now 40 21 way out into the future holy moly wow imagine an epoch a millennium imagine a million light years imagine the speed of something 
deeper and faster and more simultaneous and even light. The speed of enlightenment. <laughs> and there we stand in our artistic vulnerability. And I'm looking out at the stars and I'm going like, oh my God, come what may, come what may. Yes, I've been diagnosed. We've been diagnosed from birth to die. The pregnancy will give birth, but it's not dying, it's rebirthing. Alan, it is a fiction to think that you will die on the terms of your heart. Come what may, what will you do with your day and your night? And I released the fatigue at that time, what I call the contraband, the medical contraband, the existential identification with the medical contraband. Yes, there's wisdom in it. I go to the dentist for a root canal. But here we talk about adverse effects from a vaccination, the adverse downside of surgery as I reflected on eternity, having my chest cut open as I'm thinking of this woman giving birth naturally. I'm going, holy fuck. Vulnerability on the terms of eternity, in breath, out breath, at any second you could die, any second you could live, any second you could give birth. We are all in a birthing process. What will your art be? What will you do to contribute to something here? That's it. What is your contribution? What is your value? I kept thinking to myself, what is your value here? And let me conclude, as I came back into my temple, I reflected on this, the enormity of losses, gave myself that gift. And I cried as I dosed. I cried in my vulnerability. I lost the sand on Baldwin Beach that I had brought home to me. I had no ground, it was truly the embodiment of groundlessness without certainty, missing my daughter, wondering where it will all lead, the incredible complexity of this rise of totalitarianism and social credit scores, the, the, the mimicry of America to China's CCP, the, the collusion of Western democracy and leaders with, with totally corrupt people around the world. And I'm thinking of this girl on the beach at Baldwin. I'm thinking of eternity and stars and my film, Extinction X-Rated meets Dead Man Walking and Freedom Never Dies meets Spiritually Incorrect, both a reading and a riffing and a performance art of poignancy and mystery and pain and vulnerability and comedy and post gallows humor. I want to mix it all and touch something there to gift in my own humble way an expression of my radical existential rebellion because I don't know what to do except to create radical artistic rebellion, cinematically, musically, sonically, in performance art, and I'm gonna film it with the good help of friends who come to support this vision and release my message from the bottle and to create in my own humble way, hopefully something that excites the larger mystery, the collective and the leaders too with a high, high, high dose of existential psilocybin. And within that, an intelligence in my own artistic vulnerability, an intelligence, a Dharma artistry about that creative intelligence, a transformational intelligence within that existential psilocybin that relaxes to the best of our ability. We can do it, women. We can do it, men. We can do it, friends. We can put our minds together and collectively do things on a psychic level that relax the, the, the preoccupation primarily of men and leaders of positions of power on their hold on their own insecurity. 
The dance today for me of activism, yes, there are people. Dr. Naomi Wolf is amazing in her work, but on an existential activism, that's where I try to operate today, on a spiritual, existential, mystical activism and bringing the psychedelic there, bringing artistry there, bringing creativity there. And I'm inviting you to join me in that sacred unified field of existential rebellion and what will we do collectively to draw from one another to create art forms and poetry and theater and music and song that blow away the delusion, the conscription in that delusion, in that perversity of consciousness. It's a perversity of consciousness, the misinformation within consciousness, that psychology, that existential formation. We need just an, we need existential psychiatrists with a deep psilocybin sensibility, with a trans high organic dose of ayahuasca without the need for a root in your body, but to imagine that and to create art forms that absolutely evoke not only that experience, but just like the Buddha's teaching, because I've studied that a bit, and through the meditation practice, the power of mindful intelligence, you can transform intimately, quickly, spontaneously, just like that woman giving birth to that child, organically, coming through you. Are you willing to let authenticity come through you? To me, that's the artistry of vulnerability. It's not crying alone, but it's crying with overcoming the fatigue and the contraction of conformity and obedience to medical, political, spiritual, social, religious models of tyranny that we've been conscripted to believe and we live in a kind of existential Stockholm syndrome of worshiping false gods and idols, right? stating it very simply, but very clearly, the psychology of living in collusion with existential misinformation that we've taken in through whatever need it is and living in these spiritualized Stockholm syndromes that I am now a traditional Buddhist. <laughs> the Buddha freed his mind Worshipping does not free your mind. That's called absconding from the radicalization of your own mystical artistry to live in your own liberating wisdom. It's taking the cue rather than simply being inspired enough to get down on our knees. Take down our Buddha statues, right? Take down all of our gods and goddesses. Leave India to India. It is our time to walk on the beach of our eternity and see that birth coming through us, even though you're a man. And yes, we worship the womb and the woman too and the child. We're all in a rebirthing process. Overcome the belief that we're being incarcerated. We are not slaves. We are mystical freedom fighters. They're the slaves. They're the weak ones. We are not. And that's what I'm coming to here as I conclude today. I came in and thought about my losses. I cried through the dose, through the mystery, through the pain and the poetry and the struggle and the confusions and how I can descend so easily into the first floor of my existence. And I come down out of that skylit attic where I take the roof off my home called fear. And I look out as I did last night on this sacred land and I see, what do you see? Come what may, what do you see? What do you feel? What do you want to rebirth right now? It's not about the baby being born at the end of nine months. We're living in a rebirthing continuity. Wow. We're in an enlightening ascension if we so believe in the light walker in us. 
rather than the human embedded in convention. That is not a drug state. That is not a meditation state. That is reality in my humble way for me. So the free flow of heart space and psychology and emotions and may I support you to be pragmatic in your own artistic exploration. Yes, recreate, re-anoint, re-enchant every aspect of your life, not just a little bit here and there. Make your day within your temple an artistic expression of your poetic vulnerability. Bang the walls with red paint. Crack the Buddha's head wide open to release his enlightenment into the atmosphere of your own mind. Do things that are unordinary. Walk on the beach of your own Baldwin. That's my Burma today. I cry for the people of Burma. It is a broken hearted loss. But I walk outside and I look at eternity and I feel my own vulnerability. I think about the surgery. I've got three appointments coming up in the next two weeks with surgeons across America and the fear of hearing them talk to me about the need for surgery is enough to just close the book on all of them. But I want to open my heart to vulnerability and to see on an ordinary level what it might look like and open myself to a more possible, courageous, cutting the whole chest and the sternum wide open and putting me on a life support with 10 people in a room for 12 hours and hopefully what? They repaired the aorta so that I can live a little bit longer? Live without the anxiety? My existential anxiety got any more amplified. <laughs> I'd be like a, an existential crack cocaine addict being so driven by being alive in this great expanse called everywhere. And so vulnerability is a very real thing. I don't understand why people don't just fall down on the beach and just start weeping and crying. I occasionally do, but I go up to the sand dune behind the pine trees. There I sit against the pine tree trunk and I cry at times because I don't want to be seen by God. And then I come back down and I take my shirt off and I imagine having that fucking chest cut wide open and I live in the outrage and there's that girl walking back the other way with that baby being born. Alan, drop it. Rebirth. So beyond the losses, beyond the hope, I hope there's something in this that touches your own heart, your own courage, your artistry, your wisdom, your love, your beauty, your tenderness, your rad. Reinvent accentuate, elevate, evolve, create, give back. What is your new expression, your unique expression of you? Slow, purposeful, poetic holiness. Something about Looking at those stars last night, those galaxies, those infinite dimensions of infinity. And I just kept saying to myself, come what may, what will I do with the day? That juxtaposition of come what may, it's more than trust. Come what may, I'm going to greet you. I want to learn to love you. I want to learn to embrace you. I want to learn to anoint every fear and limitation with the grace of my own version of God. I want to be as trans-religious as religious can be in the most mundane, erotic way imaginable. I want to come out of the shadows of shame and self-judgment. You may think that that's already done, but no, it's an unlimited overcoming of facade, nakedness, reinvented, rebirthing. That child is unthinkably vulnerable, right? I've been there when my daughter was born. And that's life. 
And yes, you want to say that's death too, but there's that embryo in that next moment, in that simultaneous moment with everything. There's birth and death, right? But what will you do there creatively? And that's one of the beauties of life for me is that we can take this, this God molecules in form and color and sound and taste and use our hands and our hearts and our minds and our eyes and our feet while they move and talk and move and function according to the sensibilities of the intelligence that are connected to the senses. And we in some way create a simultaneity, a unique vulnerability in the simultaneity of the functioning senses. And we bring forth our own art in breath, out breath, take it to heart. In my case right now, I'll tell you, it feels extremely vulnerable at any second. But the same is true for every living being that ever was. So from my heart to yours, thank you for tuning in. Have a beautiful day. May it be wild and artistic and I'm headed for my Burma, Baldwin Beach. God willing, see you tomorrow. Thank you.